Hello my dear sewing friends, in this video I have for you 10 really cute, really easy and really useful, you know that's a keyword for me, stocking stuffer ideas that you can sew in no time for this coming holiday season, maybe to store as emergency gifts just in case, maybe to sell or as favors for baby shower, wedding and whatnot. So definitely quite a useful, in my opinion, list of ideas. And did I say 10? I actually think it's closer to 20 because for each one of the items I will give you an extra tip or an extra idea how you can take the same principle or the same idea of an item and take it a step further transform it and make it for him for her for kids and whatnot so it is a little bit of a longer video but I think it is totally worth it so without any further ado let's jump right into it Our first project is actually going to be a no-sew project, but equally just as beautiful and just as practical. So you will need some scissors, some cardstock, as you can see I have pre-printed mine so we make beautiful tags, and of course you will need some fold-over elastic. Now you might already have some on hand or you might order some. Now this is what we're aiming for, we're aiming for a beautiful set of hair ties, and these are actually pretty good. Naturally I have curly thick hair and these hold really well even for me so this is something that I definitely can vouch for and I can say that I would be happy to receive a gift like this now I've ordered my set from Amazon and it was a pack of 18 it was a grab bag so they just kind of took an assortment of different colors and prints and put it in one and I will leave the link for it in the info box below. And then what you want to do is you want to open each one of these and you want to cut them to 11 and a half inches. That is the length that I found works really well for me and works really well for tying them together. Now tie them like so and you want to make sure that the knot is pretty sturdy so definitely make sure that you tighten it up and then you will place it over your tag. After that, we will make sure that we tidy up the edges of the every single one of the elastics, so don't worry about it just yet. Now go ahead and cut up as many as you will need. As I mentioned, each one of my sets will have five hair ties, but you can go for more or you can go for less. It's totally up to you. And you know what? I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and cut up all of them because they truly make a beautiful stocking stuffer, a beautiful party favor, and at the end we'll see how many sets it will make. Now here's how I want to organize my happy holiday set. So more teals and pinks rather than beiges. I'm tidying up each one of the ends of the hair ties so that way it truly looks nice and neat like we've put a lot of thought into it. And here are all of my You Are Beautiful sets which feature more orange and pink and beige and here are the happy holiday sets that feature more teals and pinks and all together I got 10 full sets of 5 hair ties of each out of that pack that I ordered from Amazon. Now you can leave them as is or you can put them in a cute cellophane bag like that. It's totally totally up to you. I think either way it's gonna make a beautiful stocking stuffer and that's how it looks when it's all done. As I mentioned this is something that I would like to receive for myself as well. It's cute for adults and for kids. For this project you will need just minimal supplies and by the way you can also complete it by hand as well so you don't even have to have a sewing machine. So first let's start with fabric, I'm going to go for a cotton, preferably on the heavier side so that way your coasters are nice and sturdy and you will also need some batting and you can go with just fabric without any batting but I find that two layers of fabric are not enough to catch any liquids and uh, they're actually not fulfilling the duty of a coaster but if you put some batting in the middle it really is a nice sturdy coaster that soaks up liquids if they are spilled on the surface. 
I will start by tracing the template onto the surface of my fabric. Now my fabric is also folded in half and I will be making four coasters. Therefore, I will need to trace eight pieces of this template. It doesn't have to be a cat, you can make anything else. Just be creative and have fun with it. You will also repeat the same steps for the batting, but instead of cutting eight, you will cut four since we will only need one piece of batting per coaster. Once that is done, let's make our coaster sandwiches. <laughs> the construction of the coaster sandwich, so to speak, is really easy. You take two fabric pieces and you place them right sides together, facing. Then you take one piece of batting and you place it on top on one of the pieces of the fabric. Then you take pin needles and you pin it in place so that way it doesn't move as you sew. And on the very bottom of the cat face or any other shape that you're going to be using, leave about two inch wide opening so that way you'll be able to turn your coaster right side out. All right, once all of that is done, it is time for us to move on to the sewing machine. Now we will stitch our coasters with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that all of your coasters are stitched up, it will be time for us to turn them right side out. However, before we do that, let's tidy up the edges, let's cut off anything that's a little bit excess, and also let's snip the corners of the ears so that way when we turn them right sides out, they turn out really nice and neat. And once that is done, then we'll be turning them right side out. And then once the coasters are turned, you will also give them a really good press with your iron to really give them that crisp look. As one of the final steps, you actually have two options here. Option number one is to do a top stitching, which will also close up the hole on the bottom that we use to turn the coaster right side out. And option number two is to take a needle and thread and do that by hand. Now I've done it both ways, and I should say that top stitching with curves like that is a little bit challenging. So I'll, on the second round, I will go with just a needle and thread, and I will do that by hand. And that's how the bottom of the coaster looks when it's all done. Now give it another really good press before we wrap them up. And to wrap them, I'm going to go back to my template. I'm going to cut out the gift tag and then I'm going to punch two holes on the sides of the gift tag. And I actually don't have long enough ribbon, so I'm just going to use a longer piece of this beautiful velvet yarn that I have. I'm going to thread it through, going to place my coasters on top of it, tie a beautiful little bow and that said our gift is ready to go Now a headband might seem like a pretty simple thing to give as a gift, however I have three different types for you to choose from so that definitely makes for a really nice variety for any age, any taste and any purpose. The first one that we're going to look at is this one with a pretty knot up front and it's probably one of the easiest ones to make as well. You will need just a small piece of fabric, something that stretches, so you will need to use knits. It will be about 20 inches long and about 9 inches wide, but you can also adjust these measurements depending on your taste preference and your head circumference. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fold it onto itself, right sides together and we're going to pin those long edges. Once you have done the pinning, we're going to go ahead and sew it. You can use your serger or a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Now once that is done, we're going to go ahead and turn it right side out. So that's what I'm doing right now on your screens. Now once you have done that, make sure that the seam is positioned right in the middle of your headband. Now flip it with a seam facing down and fold it in half like you see me do on a screen. Now the top part slide it over to the middle of the bottom part like that. Now this one will go over here and this one will go over here. So you're just creating a sandwich. Now go ahead and put it in place and sew over it with a serger or a zigzag stitch. 
Once done, turn it right side out and you will have a beautiful headband with a knot in the middle. Now for this headband and for the bandana headband, you will be using fabric without stretch. So cotton, cotton blends, linen, rayon, anything like that will do. And I do have a separate tutorial for each one of them as well as the free sewing pattern and a gift tag that you can print for the retro look headband that ties up in a little bow on top. So definitely take a look in the info box below so that way we don't make this video an hour long. Everything will be in the info box for your convenience. Depending on the fabric and depending on the pattern, you can make this for kids, for teenagers, and for adults. So possibilities are truly endless. Now, you've just seen a couple of items from this list and if you really paid attention then you would have seen that each one of those items either had a cute little tag to it or maybe it was presented in a really nice way and that is no coincidence because I truly tried to make it sort of delicious to the eye, if I may say so. Much like when we receive food on the plate, right? You want to eat something that is appealing to your eyes and it goes the same for the gift, at least in my opinion. And I know that it goes against the grain of the thought is what matters and I truly understand that, but I think psychologically we tend to appreciate things that just look nicer at the first glance. Think of it, if you're wearing a shirt that is all wrinkly, you tend to think that maybe that person just rolled out of bed, right? But if the shirt, the same shirt, the same person is ironed and it's looking crisp and nice, you tend to think, oh, that person, you know, invested some time in their morning routine or whatever. I'm just making stuff as I go. But you get the point. I would really encourage you to think about presentation of your handmade gifts from A to Z so that way it doesn't feel random. And even those people on your gift list that are really skeptical of handmade gifts when they receive it they're like wow this is really nice so I think thoughtful packaging is definitely that detail that can make the thoughtfulness of your handmade gifts go a lot further For this next item on our list, I also have three options, including a no sew option. So it's for every skill level and for everyone on your list, for him, for her, and for kids as well. So you can definitely play around with different fabrics and different materials. So let's take a look at one of my favorite ways how to make a beautiful scarf. So first we will need some fabric. If I were you, I would go for wool or wool blends, maybe some soft linen, flannel will do really great. You want fabric where you will be able to see the weave of the actual material because we will need that in order to create our fringe and you will see that in just about a few moments. Now my fabric I got is a remnant and it was a big square. So I'm cutting it in half in order to connect these two short ends so that way that would make a really long scarf for me. But if you just have one piece or you want a square scarf, you don't have to do that. Now first we need to determine how long we want our fringe to be. Then we need to take care of the raw edges. Now here what I'm doing is I'm marking at that point the beginning of where I'm going to hem my scarf and then I'm folding it about a quarter of an inch in like you see me do on a screen and you will do that along the whole raw edge. Now let's go to the sewing machine and we will stitch right over here right on the edge. So go ahead and grab matching thread or maybe contrasting thread and let's go ahead and do that. As you see I'm stitching on the very edge just like so. Once that is done we will go ahead and we will turn it over one more time and here you see I've left space for the fringe. So go ahead and turn it one more time about a quarter of an inch and this time we're going to stitch on top of previous stitch line right over here and you can see how it looks up close in this case. Now if it is a little bit better for you to put it in place please do use pins. In my case I don't use pins for this last step however find what works for you. It's the best way how to go about sewing. Now once both of the raw edges have been enclosed and hemmed now it's time to make 
make the fringe. Now what you will need to do is you will need to separate the fibers and then you have to pull them out and that will create that beautiful fringe that you will see on a lot of scarves. Now it might take a little bit of time in order to pull all of those threads but believe me you will be able to do that in about 30 minutes maybe an hour depending on the size of your fringe and it's really not that difficult to do it's just you know pulling threads. You see I've pulled quite a few over here and that's how my fringe looks after all. Now it did curl on its own so I did not do that on purpose it just did it on its own and I actually like the way it looks. So that's how the scarf looks on the dress form all done and finished up. You will repeat that on both ends. Now the flannel scarf is a no sew scarf so here you don't have to do any sewing. All you have to do is cut the length that you want your scarf to be and then cut the fringe easy as that. Now another scarf that we have is an infinity scarf and I do have a full tutorial for it and I will leave it for you in the info box below. This could be a really great option for a more voluminous scarf, maybe scarf for a lady. You can play around with different fabrics and textures and prints. Just have fun and make a beautiful gift. To continue the topic of little stocking stuff for gifts that could be made for the entire family and could be equally as fun and useful for everybody, for adults and kids, let's sew some socks. And that's exactly right. We're going to be sewing them and not knitting them. Now I did use a free sewing pattern from Ellie and Mac that also comes with instructions. So I will leave the link for the free sewing pattern in the info box below. And once you get the free sewing pattern, you will be able to follow these sewing instructions but just to give you an idea these are really great to customize to use up those beautiful knit fabric scraps that you have around your sewing room and to really really stretch your imagination you can make them shorter you can make them the original length or you can go all the way to the knee highs if you have somebody in your family who loves to wear boots or maybe you just want to make fun elf socks why not make them for the entire family family and have fun with this really fun and cute idea of a stocking stuffer like handmade socks. Now these little bows are perfect for a variety of reasons. They're quick and easy to make. They're absolutely cute and gorgeous. Plus they make a perfect stocking stuffer or a party favor. And you can make them from your scraps, knits or vovens. Now cut your small scraps into three by four inch rectangles and two by one inch rectangle as well. Now bigger one will be for the bow and smaller one will be for the middle of it. And here we need to do very little sewing and have your glue gun ready as well. With the wrong side up, fold the edges to the middle like so. And then fold it into the middle from the opposite sides, slightly overlapping them. Now take a hand sewing needle and gather the bow. And once done, secure it with a knot. Then grab a glue gun, put a little dot of glue in the middle of the bow on the right side and quickly fold the edges of the smaller piece to the inside as well. Place it on the bow. Once it's secure, turn it to the back and glue the loose ends by overlapping them. And your project is done! 
Now you can glue these cute little bows on a variety of different surfaces, but I like to use these little clips that I get off Amazon and I will leave the link for you guys in the info box below. Now you can do them one by one or arrange them in a set like this. Either way, they're super cute. Now here's an extra little tip. For somebody who is a little bit older, maybe a teenage girl or maybe an adult, you can make these gorgeous bows out of silk or satin or maybe even velvet. Something that would look really gorgeous in a hair or maybe in a, in a hairdo. And I also use these clips from Amazon. These are a little bit larger and a full tutorial for these bows will be in the info box below. You know how some things never really get old, although we've probably seen them time and time again? And yes, we're talking about totes. Of course, we've seen that as a sewing project for any skill level and for any occasion. But today, we're going to step it up a notch and I'll share with you three additional ways how you can make it super special and super fun. So today I'm going to be making a personalized tote as a gift for my friend who absolutely loves to go to the library and I think this would be a really nice thoughtful gift plus she also loves to do art so wait and see what will I incorporate into this tote to really suit her artistic side. So here I'm working with linen, which is medium weight, and the dimensions of my pieces are 16 inches by 18 inches for the body of the tote, and you will need two of those, and 36 inches by five inches for the straps, and you will need two of those as well. So let's go ahead and put this all together, make a tote, and then personalize it. So first you will need to put the toad right sides together and then we're going to sew three of the toad's sides. So you're going to sew this, this, and the bottom as well, leaving the top open. You're going to sew it with a straight stitch first and then finish the edges either with a serger or a zigzag. Now with the straps, you're going to fold them in half like you see me do on the screen. And then you're going to sew the long edges with the same technique, straight stitch first and then a serger or a zigzag and I apologize I did iron this linen it's just linen it likes to be all wrinkly crinkly so it is what it is at this point so now I have sewn three of the sides of the tote and what I've done right over here is I've actually folded this over two inches and gave it a really good press and it will help us in the future. So now let's take care of the straps. So now you have sewn your straps like this, both of the sides. What you need to do next is turn them right side out. Once you have done that for your straps, an optional step is to top stitch on both edges so that way the straps are really nice and secure and it also gives it that really nice flat detail. So I've done that on mine right over here. You will repeat that on both straps. For this next step, let's go ahead and attach the straps to the actual tote. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a measuring tape or a ruler and we're going to measure two inches from each side of the top of the tote. Then you're going to go ahead and take your straps and you're going to insert them into the fold from the wrong side. So I'm placing the strap right there at the two inch mark, making sure that all of the threads go inside and everything is nice and neat on the outside. So once you have placed the strap where you want it to be, make sure that you pin it in place so that way it doesn't move when we're going to be sewing. Repeat that for the other strap as well. And once that is done, you're also going to be repeating the same steps for the other side of the tote as well with the other strap. Now that the straps have been pinned in place, we're going to go ahead and secure it with a straight stitch all the way around right here on the bottom. So now let's go ahead and shape the bottom of the tote. Let's start with the right corner first and you will repeat the same steps for the other one. Go ahead and pop the corner of your tote open like so, aligning the top and the bottom seams. Once that is done, go ahead and lay it flat, grab your ruler and measure about three inches across. So it will be one and a half inches on one side and one and a half inches on the other side. Once done, go ahead and pin it in a straight line from one side 
to another side. That is going to be the way you're going to sew it across so that way it will form a flat bottom for your toad. You're going to repeat that for one side and for the other side of the toad as well. For extra security, I usually do two rows of stitches so that way it really stays nice and strong. Now that the bottom of the toad is done, the very last step for us is to go ahead and take all of the straps and flip them up towards the top of the toad and pin them in place. That will ensure that when we do the final row of top stitching on the very top of the toad, we catch all of the straps and that will ensure that they will lay flat and secure. So let's go ahead and do that. A final row of top stitching on the top of the toad. All right, now the toad is done and it's time to personalize. Now I will be using my Cricut machine, which I absolutely love and adore. It really is so cool, especially when it comes to personalizing. So as I mentioned, my friend really loves to go to the library with her kids. So I thought something library inspired or library themed would be really cool in order to personalize this tote bag. And she really loves to do art. In fact, she is fantastic at doing art. And lately she's been really into painting mushrooms, all sorts of mushrooms, magical mushrooms, fun mushrooms, bright mushrooms. And then I thought, you know what? One personalized design is really great, but two is always better. So here I was searching Cricut Design Space and I found this really beautiful image of, that's right, mushrooms. And I was really looking for a lot of white space so that way she can color it in. And here I'm using Smart Iron On, which is really nice and smooth and velvety. So it's really gonna go great with bright colors. And I will give it to her together with these fabric markers that she'll be able to use to color in all those fun mushrooms and maybe even do some of her own designs on this tote as well. And I truly think this is such a nice, fun and interesting gift so that way not only it is you know thoughtful but also provides a really fun and creative activity. All right, I promised three additional ideas when it comes to tote bags. So number one, instead of doing Cricut, you can also do your own hand lettering with the same fabric markers. Now I've done a video about that a couple of years ago and I absolutely love the way it turns out. So as you can guess, I love to personalize and this is one of the great ways how to do it. Number two, you can use tote bags as reusable gift bags, which is really cool and great. And you can use them year after year, which is always a bonus. And number three, instead of a tote bag, you can make a drawstring bag. So if the idea of a tote bag kind of seems a little bit boring, drawstring bags are really fun as well. And you can also personalize them. Besides, you can turn them into really fun little backpacks or fill them with candy or goodies. So many fun possibilities. And I truly hope that you explore a lot of them. Now this next category is tried and true and these are some of the designs that I've been using for a while now. So if you've been watching me for a bit, chances are you have seen these in my latest videos. So to spare you some of the repetition, I'm gonna give you a really quick rundown of number eight, nine, and 10. Now if you haven't been watching me for a while, then full tutorials for these items you will find in the info box below underneath this video. So let's get started with a zipper pouch. Now often Sometimes we think of a zipper pouch as of cosmetic bag or somewhere where the lady would store her makeup or things like that. But I would encourage you to take a step further and to really look at it a case where you can store pencils or art supplies or tools so it can really be a multifunctional item. And I really encourage you to play around with the idea of what can you store in a zipper bag and what can it be really useful for. Number nine is a really cute little item, mini wallet. Now you can sew it from fabric or you can make it from cork and it comes together so quickly. Again, I call it a mini wallet, but it really is a cute little case for a variety of things like your jewelry, your makeup, maybe some money, maybe some documents when you travel. Maybe it's a case for a couple of little things that you like to carry around. So possibilities are truly endless. You can make it for a adults in leather or cork or you can make it for kids in fun little prints as well so definitely have fun with this one
Number 10 is a gift and a gift wrap all in one. And if I were you, I would give it with a really nice fragrant bar of soap or even maybe a handmade bar of soap. And number 10 is a washcloth. Also comes together very quickly, is a very useful item, and you can make a couple of these in no time for some of the most favored people in your family. Thank you so much for watching my dear sewing friends. I truly hope that this video gave you a ton of inspiration and a ton of ideas and I'm really looking forward to seeing you very soon on the channel again. Alrighty, have a wonderful day. Bye!